Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Take 10 at 10 of 10. we got Charles Allen here, who is a Microsoft MVP, one of our favorite presenters um, for our 10-minute presentation. And also note, this is kind of uh, HR payroll day. We have another session coming up with Terry Healy later on this afternoon. So, Charles, without uh, taking any more time, I'm going to go ahead and let you take it away. All right. Well, thank you very much. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, let's like, um, my presentation is moving along without me. So let's get back here and start this. So thank you for attending. And I'm normally considered a slow talker, so I'll speed myself up today to uh, cover all this. There are multiple slides, and some of them I'll fly through because uh, I want to just show you the product more than I want to show you a PowerPoint. So if we take a look here, uh, there are a few key things, though. What's available for self-service in 2015 that they've added? There it goes again. Uh, we've got the employee profile, uh, pay stubs, direct deposit, W-4, skills and training, and benefit enrollment, actually, in being able to enroll thyself in benefit. So let's take a quick look here. Uh, you can use the web or traditional client. Uh, so if you guys are not using that yet for your uh, system, then that is a great um, way to introduce the web client to your environment. Uh, there are some new security roles. Uh, there's actually one in 2015 that's been added. Sorry about that. Uh, the other ones, though, are employee self-service, and you'll want to assign those to the uh, to the employees that you will create in GP as users. Uh, so basically, you're going to notice here that there is a user type of limited. There's also another one that's going to be self-service that you'll be able to use as well. Uh, if you have licenses for it. But you want to use limited or self-service, really, unless you have somebody who has set up as a full user, too. Uh, also, you'll want to make sure on the payroll side that you assign the user right here to the GP user ID so it can associate your uh, GP login with your payroll user, payroll employee. There also are new self-service roles for the home page. And here is an example of a home page. So let me go ahead and I'm not going to keep showing PowerPoint. So I actually want to show you the screen. So let's quit that and move this guy over. Go to full screen mode. So what we have here is a home screen for a user who has been set up as an employee self-service user. And this page that you're seeing <clears throat> is using the self-service role. <clears throat> now, notice I am Polar. And if any of you have ever used Fabricam in payroll, then you know that Pilar Ackerman is one of the employees in that company. Now, for those of you who are selling 2010 or before that, <clears throat> some of this may still seem pretty new to you, such as time cards and project time and expense and requisitions. Those are also self-service items, but they're not new to 2015. They're new to 2013 release two. So, uh, there is plenty of information out there about those. But we're going to focus really on the employee self-service in 2015 here that's new in 2015. Now, when I go to the HR and payroll page, notice that my choices are quite limited, as you might surmise. So here I've got all these options here that I can use. Now, to really make this product work, other than giving employees read-only access, you need to set up workflow 
for GP. And there are two different kinds of workflow. There's workflow via SharePoint, and there's workflow via GP. And it doesn't really matter which way, but if you want to enable employees or empower employees to be able to make changes to their data and submit them for approval, you have to set up workflow in GP, and that is, or workflow in some regard. And that is done via the administration area under the setup area. Okay. Now, if you do not have workflow enabled, then you can see what we have here. We have just a uh, dimmed screen. If I did have workflow going, which I don't today because of an Active Directory issue, you can see what you can change as an employee. You've got your personal data, your contacts, dependents, and you can see your history. Now, you normally won't be able to change your history, of course, but should you move and change your address, then you have the ability to do that. And then you'll have the option to save your changes and then have it approved by somebody in HR or payroll. Now, that's the employee profile. There's also this thing called direct deposit. Now, if anybody used direct deposit in business portal, you know that you really didn't use it because it didn't work very well. And it required really a lot of knowledge on the part of the employee on how HR and payroll worked. That's no longer the case in 2015. You can see here that this looks pretty much just like the uh, direct deposit maintenance window for an employee. But it gives the employee up here the ability to stop a deposit. It also gives them the ability to add accounts. But what we did not have in Business Portal was the move up and move down option. So now an employee can say, well, you know, I need to add a uh, $500 savings account, and I want that to be first. Well, you can add it and then move it up so that it is online one. And that is a nice, easy feature. Okay. As employees, as the company grows and people are changing direct deposit accounts all the time, uh, now you can let people just go hog wild if you want to. Skills and training. So skills and training, education, what tests you've taken, what skills you've acquired, and what uh, training you have done with the company, of course. This is all with the company. And again, the employees will be able to make changes to this information and save it. Pay stubs. Uh, let's see, I actually need to come over here. This allows you to see your pay stubs. Now, one of the nice things they've added is the ability to do it over a date range. Also, they have taken away the Social Security number. So you no longer have to worry about printing out a direct deposit stub with your direct deposit, or, sorry, with your Social Security number prominently displayed for people. And here is your reprint pay statement. And again, you can use a filter to filter your data. Let's go back up here. And let's look at W4s. You also have the ability to change your W4. And let's look at benefits. Now, this is just a simple way of looking at what you have. And of course, with all the Affordable Care Act and requirement to be on unless or be offered at least, uh, this allows the employee to see what they have and what's available in case they don't have everything. Now, another option down here is this enhanced view, which is going to provide more information. And as you can see, I've got some additional fields that can provide more detail to the employee. 
Now, lastly, with the employee self-service is the benefit enrollment. <laughs> and that is the ability for employees to enroll uh, in their benefits for you, thereby making it a lot easier than having to upload files and all that sort of stuff at the end of the year, which everybody loves to do. So <clears throat> in 2015, Microsoft has added all these items that you see here, they've added the pay stubs, they've added the benefit enrollment piece, and you now can give employees the ability to manage their own data as well as give managers the ability to manage their team's data all within GP, either using the traditional client or the web client. Now, <clears throat> If you have any questions, because obviously this is a very short demo, 10 minutes, uh, there's plenty of data out on the internet. And just to come down here, you are welcome to contact me at any time. Also go to our website here to read more information. And uh, we actually do have a What's New in GP 2015 webinar tomorrow morning, which you're welcome to attend. Just go to that website and uh, shoot me an email and we can get you set up for that. So, okay.